brothers and sisters, a very happy May Day to all. I'm very honoured to be here with all of you this morning. Now, earlier on, when I came in and I saw this big book booklet, Every Worker Matters, it reminds me that, you know, Brother Nchi Ming took over from me as Education Minister. And I should share with you a little story. So, when I started, now Chi Ming is getting worried. <laughs> when, I, when I was in MOE and I said, every school a good school, a drama director actually came up to me and said, Mr. Heng, every school a good school, if every worker, a good worker. And I'm glad that Chi Ming took over from me and now as Sec Gen, he says, every worker matters. So, thank you, Chi Ming. And just now in the video, we saw so many everys, right? Every union matters. And indeed, the labour movement has always been the PAP's most important partner. Our ties go all the way back to the post-war years before either PAP or NTUC even existed. Now you may be wondering why. Well, Mr Lee Kuan Yew began his political career as a lawyer representing the Postal Workers' Union. He warned them a wage increase and better terms of service from the colonial governments. By the time the PAP was formed in 1954, Mr. Lee was legal advisor to more than 100 unions and associations. Many other founding members of the PAP were unionists. Unionists knew they had to enter politics to fight for better life for workers. And politicians knew they had to mobilize workers if they were to have a mass base. After the PAP was elected to office in 1959, it tried to revitalize the Singapore Trade Union Congress, or STUC, to become the unifying body for trade unions in Singapore. The effort failed, for they were both communists and non-communists in the STUC. When the PAP split, in July 1961, with the pro-communists leaving to form Barisan Socialists, the STUC also broke apart. The union supporting the PAP formed the National Trade Unions Congress, or NTUC, and the union supporting the Barisan Socialists formed the Singapore Association of Trade Unions, or SATU. SATU commanded the overwhelming share of the unions 82 to NTUC's 27. But the PAP prevailed in a political struggle against the Barisan. And as a result, the NTUC too prevailed in the battle for the hearts and minds of workers. The heated political struggle of the 1960s was the crucible that forged the close bonds between the PAP and NTUC. As the founding secretary of the NTUC, David Nair said, the PAP and NTUC were two wings of the same political movement. It was a close symbiotic relationship from the beginning. If such a relationship had not been forged, we might not have weathered the early crisis or industrialised so rapidly. In the early years of our independence, we were faced with the harsh realities of surviving and growing our economy without a hinterland. The British military withdrawal from Singapore, first announced in 1967, further sharpened our existential crisis. Faced with the threat of massive job losses, the government had to decisively welcome investors 
industrialize and create jobs. We have to make tough choices that went against the grain of conventional wisdom. At that time, for example, inviting MNCs to invest here, even as others were turning them away. The unions too had to evolve. They were no longer just the mass base in the anti-colonial movements. We had to build a new nation, and unionists too had to become nation builders. This was why the NTUC organized its modernization seminar in 1969, 50 years ago this year. It was a landmark event in the history not only of NTUC, but also of Singapore. If the labor movement had not transformed itself in the 1970s, it would have become irrelevant in post-independence Singapore. Its membership would have declined, and we would not have tripartism. At the seminar, unionists agreed trade unions had to go beyond collective bargaining. To improve the lives of workers, unions had to become core drivers of our social and economic development together with the government and employers. And unions had to shift from confrontation to collaboration. NTUC set up cooperatives to serve important social missions, among them to help workers cope with the cost of living by providing affordable options for essential goods and services. And many of these cooperatives have since become household names, such as fair price and income. NTUC representatives sat in all major statutory boards, including EDB and CPF. And they continue to do so. The experience of running cooperatives gave union leaders valuable insights into the problems of running businesses. It helped to shift them from an adversarial stance towards management to one based on cooperation and mutual benefit. The modernization seminar thus paved the way for tripartism and ushered in constructive and harmonious relations between unions, employers, and the government. NTUC's brand of progressive trade unionism has been critical in enabling our workers to stay ahead of changes. For instance, in 1982, to get our workforce ready for computerization, NTC set up a computer training center to teach basic IT skills to workers. The computer training center evolved into today's NTC Learning Hub, one of the largest training providers in Singapore. Our tripartite model has also helped us to overcome one crisis after another. When the 1985 recession hit, union leaders supported the government's proposals for two-year wage restraints and a 15% cut in the CPF contribution rates for employers. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but the unionists understood why we had to do this, to save jobs and convince their members Thanks to the support of workers, we managed to turn the economy around. We continue to uphold tripartism in subsequent economic crises, such as the Asian financial crisis in 1997. Later, during the global financial crisis in 2008, the tripartite partners rallied together to upturn the downturn. With the backing of employers and unions, the government introduced the resilience package totaling $20.5 billion to keep workers employed and help viable companies stay afloat. All along, we stayed deeply committed to tripartism. This has enabled us to stick together, step up to the challenges facing us, and see Singapore through 
crisis after crisis. Along the way, government officials and unionists forged close working relationships. Government officers have long been seconded to NTUC, while labour representatives have been deployed extensively in government agencies. In fact, brothers Lee Sen Lung, Teo Chi Hien and Lim Sui Se were among the young officers assigned to help, up, help set up NTUC's computer training centre. These interactions have kept both sides sensitive to each other's concerns. Brothers and sisters, we owe a debt of gratitude to the unionists who embarked on the modernization journey 50 years ago. The unionists who attended the modernization seminar had little formal education. Many of them did not speak English, and NTUC had to provide simultaneous translation into four languages. But this ordinary man and woman had deep courage and the future in their bones. And they did extraordinary things. They modernized themselves, the movements, and the country by the bootstraps. We are here today because of them. Much like at NTUC's birth in 1961, the 1969 Modernization Seminar was a product of the close NTUC PAP symbiosis. The labor leaders who played leading roles in NTUC's modernization included David Nair, Siam Wee Kok, Ho Si Bing, S. R. Nadan, and T. H. Elliott. And the political leaders who spoke at the seminar included Lee Kuan Yew, Go Keng Sui, and S. Rajaratnam. Indeed, it was Dr. Go who suggested that NTUC begin with insurance and fittingly became NTUC Income's first chairman. Many other first generation PAP leaders played key roles in NTUC's modernization, including Ong Pang Boon, Lim Kim San, Hon Sui Sen, and E. W. Bakker. This close working relationship between the PAP and NTUC underpins our brand of tripartism. It remains as vital today as it was in 1969. Today, we face a rapidly changing global landscape which can reshape all aspects of our lives. Our tripartite partners will have to respond to these changes. The first is the speed of technological advancements. Automation and digitalization will transform businesses and social models, create high quality jobs, and improve the lives of people but they will also make many jobs and skills redundant. What we learned in school may not stay relevant for long. Second, globalization creates bigger markets and opportunities, but also sharper competition. Globalization has enabled competitive companies to scale across many markets and make large profits. Companies compete to pay for and hire the best. The best get even more than the rest, leading to tensions between the haves and have-nots. So support for globalization is falling, especially in advanced economies. Many workers feel they have been left behind, and free trade has not worked for them. We must make sure that the fruits of growth are felt by all, or our society can fracture. Third, the changing profile of our workforce. We have a range of workers, from low-wage workers and self-employed individuals to managers and professionals. If we are not careful, 
there will be a skills and digital divide. Those who are well-educated and digitally savvy can go on to build more skills and do even better. Those who start with less may risk falling behind. Our workforce in Singapore is also ageing. People are living longer, which is good. But we will need to make it possible for all workers to stay active in the workforce for as long as they are willing and able. So these trends are changing the future of jobs and of businesses throughout the world, not only in Singapore. Can Singapore chart our own way forward just as we did 50 years ago? Yes, we can. Just as NTUC embarked on modernization 50 years ago, we must embark on another significant transformation. In fact, Brother Chi Ming and his team have already started. Building on what they have started, let me suggest three strategies as we transform for the future. First, be an active agent in the transformations of our economy. Second, prepare our workforce for jobs of the future through lifelong learning. And third, pursue inclusive growth. To build better lives for our workers, we'll have to transform our economy. Our tripartism is a key asset in this effort. Since 2016, we have launched 23 industry transformation maps, or ITMs, covering about 80% of our economy. The ITMs set out clear strategies to drive innovation, promote internationalization, raise productivity and the skills of our workers in each industry. We have already seen success stories. Yesterday, I launched the Business Times Leaders of Transformation book at the Enterprise 50 Awards event. The companies profiled exemplify what it means to be leaders of transformation. All of them made efforts to upskill their workers. I'm therefore confident that we will succeed because of the strong tripartite partnerships in all the industries covered by the ITMs. The unions, in particular, play a critical role. NTUC has organised itself to be an active agent of transformation, helping to communicate these changes, win support and rally the workers to come on board. Brother Pokun is at the helm of industry transformation in the manufacturing and trade and connectivity clusters. Brother Desmond Chu is leading, leading several initiatives to help companies innovate and to help workers make the most of new job opportunities. The labour movement is promoting skills development. I'm very happy that Brother Chi Ming is taking a major step by setting up the company training committees or CTCs. The labour movement will be embedded in companies to help workers and employers alike. And this will take training beyond broad-based national strategies to the company level. So why is Chi Ming doing this? Because all too often, workers and companies might not be clear about their skills training needs. Unions can apply the deep knowledge of the workplace and factory floor to identify the right courses, customise training and develop relevant skills for particular jobs. The relationship between companies and workers is a mutually reinforcing one. More competitive companies provide better jobs and higher pay for workers. And highly skilled workers make companies stronger, and more productive, more competitive. Unions are well positioned to strengthen both. I'm happy that more companies and unions are working together 
to deploy technology to augment labour to achieve win-win outcomes. Some companies seek to just protect their own bottom lines and deploying technology and machines to replace workers. Win for companies, lose for workers. This causes resentment. I must share with you a little story that Brother Suisse shared with me a few days ago. And Suisse shared this very cute story. He said, well, you know, a, a chicken went to the pig and said, we should start a joint business. Then what business? We should start a ham and egg sandwich business. So the chicken said, I'll go on laying many eggs. And the pig said, I will be gone. <laughs> so win for one and a big loss for the other. But I'm very happy to see Dr. Robert Yavts and our SNAF partner here. There are many others that seek to redesign jobs, retrain workers and redeploy them as part of the upgrading plans of their companies. And I visited Robert at his YCH warehouse. Well done, Robert. You know, when companies restructure and worker skills are upgraded, workers earn higher wages and improve their lives. And such win-win outcomes are what we want. Last week, I witnessed the signing of an MOU between Chai Tia Maintenance and the Building Construction and Timber Industries Employees Union to set up a CTC. Chai Tia Maintenance is one of the largest homegrown cleaning companies in Singapore. But because cleaning is not an attractive task, Chai Tia Maintenance had always faced challenges in hiring and retaining workers. They are overcoming their difficulties by investing heavily in equipment and innovation, as well as in training so their workers can operate new equipment and processes confidently. The CTC will help both Chai Tia Maintenance and its workers be more productive in easier, safer and smarter jobs. Brother Chiming has said that NTUC will set up 1,000 CTCs over the next three years to benefit around 330,000 workers. Lifelong learning and reskilling will take on new meaning. This far-sighted scheme will be a game changer. So let us all give Brother Chi Ming and his team a warm round of applause. <laughs> Brother Chi Ming mentioned earlier that I asked to meet with union leaders yeah. over a, a cheap lunch in MOF. <laughs> in my discussions with union leaders, they told me that they wanted to see more support for unionized workers. I've supported and accepted these suggestions. So from 1st April 2020, unionized companies and E2I partners can receive an additional 10% of funding support from the labor movement under the Enterprise Development Grant. But to be eligible, companies will have to set up CTCs and commit to positive worker outcomes such as raising salaries of low-wage workers or reskilling. It is important for companies to see workers as key partners in their company's transformation and to make sure that their transformation efforts benefit workers. CTCs reflect how our unusual labour movement has evolved over the years. The modernisation spirit has led unions to deepen their partnerships with employers to make sure training and skills upgrading directly benefits workers. Elsewhere, it is left for the private sector or the governments to initiate. Here in Singapore, 
It is led by unions and workers. And that is a remarkable capacity of our labour movement to be the co-agents of economic and social transformation. And this capacity is something we must continue to strengthen. The second strategy is preparing our workers for jobs of the future through lifelong learning. NTUC recognises there will be new industries and new jobs in the future. So it is embarking on preparing our workforce for these jobs. Let me share a story from my trip to Silicon Valley with school leaders when I was education minister. We went to study EdTech, Educational Technologies. After the visit, I asked our education leaders, what do you like? What do you not like? So they told me, we liked the creative use of technology, but we do not like their approach to use technology to replace the teachers. They do not understand how humans learn. I agreed with them, so we decided to take a different path we develop our own student learning space and use technology to augment what teachers could do to enable teachers to teach even better. So in the same way, we must make sure that technological advancements help workers to do their jobs better, not replace them. I attended the World Economic Forum at Davos in January this year, and one of the reports estimated that advanced technologies could result in the loss of 75 million jobs worldwide by 2022. And 2022 is just three years from now. On the other hand, up to 133 million new jobs, almost double what might be lost, may be created by these same technologies. What does this mean for us? It means that there are many new opportunities for all of us, and we must be prepared to seize them. Skills development is key. As we say in Mandarin, Learn actively, apply what we learn, lifelong learning, lifelong benefits. I announced in this year's budget that the government will spend $3.6 billion over the next three years to help our workers thrive amid economic transformation. Efforts like the Skills Future and Professional Conversion programs have helped our workers do well amid economic transformation. Take, for example, Brother Lim Chin Chai at the PSA. Chin Chai used to operate manual yard cranes stationed in a cabin seven stories high. Through PCP, he learned to handle advanced automated cranes. Now, he works from an air-conditioned control center on the ground in comfort and safety. At first, Chin Chai was uncertain. After all, he had to learn a brand new system. And when I asked him, he said, for the first time in 30 years. But now, he's confident and ready to tackle the transformations taking place in his workplace. Chin Chai was recently featured on CNA and he said of his new role, you don't feel alone. It's like a big family. With the support of schemes such as PCPs, I hope that all our workers will never feel alone in the skill development journeys. Chin Chai is an excellent example of a worker who has taken the effort 
to adapt and grow into new roles. I'm happy that there are many workers like Chin Chai. Last year, almost 5,000 workers participated in PCPs, 30% more than in 2017. About two-thirds also received higher wages than before. We can't protect jobs that will be made redundant. But we can and will protect workers, every working man and woman. Brother Chiming and his colleagues are thinking of what's next? How can we do better? Today, training mainly helps workers take up good jobs in existing growth areas. But we should also start thinking about how our workers can develop skills for jobs that do not yet exist. The rapid pace of technological advancement means that the jobs of tomorrow will be different from the jobs of today. Unions can help develop the right attitudes among workers towards upskilling and reskilling. We must support workers to prepare for the future and not be fatalistic about change and economic transformation. NTUC's E2I is doing a good job and expanding its reach by partnering our institutes of higher learning. And we look forward to more initiatives and teamwork in this area. This brings me to my third strategy, ensuring that our economic growth remains inclusive. As I mentioned earlier, globalization has come under question. Many people in advanced economies are frustrated. Their wages are stagnating, their political systems are malfunctioning, and their lives are not improving. We cannot guarantee the same will not happen here, but we can and must try to avoid a similar fate. And the key to that is tripartism and the continued vitality of our unions. In their May Day message, Sister Mary and Brother Chi Ming spoke about the labour movement's mission to help workers secure the three Ws, better wages, better work, prospects, and better welfare. And Chi Ming earlier spoke on this and ended with also three Ws, the three wins. Wins for business, win for workers, and win for Singapore. The labour movement has a mandate to help all workers secure these three Ws, from daily rated workers to those in managerial and professional roles, as well as the self-employed and part-timers. In addition, we must pay particular attention to the lower wage workers, seniors, and those who have left the workforce early. This is why Brother Suisse, when he was NTUC SecGen, first mooted the idea of a progressive wage model. Today, the progressive wage model covers all outsourced workers in the cleaning, security, and landscape sectors. Leaf technicians will be joining them soon. The progressive wage model maps out the clear pathways for workers to progress in their careers and earn more as they become more skilled, productive, and take on higher responsibilities. The labour movements and the government are also focused on helping our seniors. Our workforce is getting older, but with age comes wisdom. We therefore want to support our seniors to continue working for as long as they are able and want to do so. This is why the government is strengthening support for our seniors to earn more, save more, and have greater peace of mind in retirement. This support includes higher workfare payments, additional extra interest for older CPF members, and the extension of the special employment credits to end 2020. Supporting senior employment is something close to the hearts 
of the 4G leadership. The tripartite partners have agreed to raise the retirement and re-employment ages so that more workers can stay in the workforce if they choose to. We will also review CPF contribution rates. We will implement these proposals step by step. We must not forget the workers who have left the workforce early or those who have not worked consistently and therefore have not accumulated much in their CPF savings. The government is studying how to help these individuals save more and how to target those who need help most. We'll work out the details in the coming months and share more when ready. Every worker matters. The NTUC and the PAP have always been committed to uplifting all our workers. We are committed to this because we believe we are in this together. Whether you are rich or poor, whether you are a worker or a manager, whether you are an employer or a unionist, each of us owes a duty to care for, support and sustain each other. This is how we keep our country together. This is why we address each other as brother or sister in the labour movement. I trust that the NTUC will consider what more can be done for the well-being of the various groups in our workforce. We must leave no one behind. The NTUC is stronger today than when it embarked on its modernization journey 50 years ago. But this journey cannot stop given the challenges ahead. I'm confident that NTUC can renew itself and embark on yet another transformation just like in 1969. You may ask, why is this important? Would Singapore suffer if the labour movement were to disappear? As it so happens, Mr Lee Kuan Yew asked precisely this question 50 years ago when he opened the modernisation seminar. He said, and I quote, There is one school of thought that for rapid industrialisation for an underdeveloped country, it is better not to have trade unions. They cite Hong Kong, Taiwan and South Korea in support of this theory. So why shouldn't Singapore take the same route? Mr. Lee asked. His answer deserves to be quoted in full. Because Singapore's objective is not just industrialization. The development of the country is very important. But equally important is the development of the nature of our society. We do not want our workers submissive, docile, toting up to the foreman, the foreman to the supervisor, and the supervisor to the boss for increments and promotions. To survive as a nation, and distinct community. We have to be a proud and rugged people or we will fail. You can neither be proud nor rugged if you have not got self-respect. Self-respect is what our trade unions have and will give to our workers. The protection for a man's right to his own dignity his dignity as a human being, as a citizen. He may be an unskilled worker, but he is one of us. He must be prepared to fight for and die for Singapore. He will neither be able nor willing to do this if he is a cringing coward.
So why are we still committed to the labour movement? Why do we believe that it should expand its scope to encompass the entire workforce, workers at all levels, professionals, SME owners, self-employed individuals, and even foreign workers? Because self-respect is what NTUC has given to every working man and woman in Singapore. The movement has guaranteed a man's right to his own dignity, his dignity as a human being, as a citizen. Today is the first time I'm speaking to you as leader of the next generation of PAP leaders. I renew today the pledge that Mr. Lee made at your modernization seminar 50 years ago and that every Prime Minister has since renewed. I assure you the close symbiotic relationship between the PAP and the NTUC, which underpins our unique and precious brand of tripartism, will continue into the 4G and beyond. In Malay, there is a saying, Basatu Tago, Bacharai Robo. United we stand, divided we fall. Truly the, truly, the PAP and NTUC have gone through thick and thin almost over 60 years. NTUC backs the PAP because the PAP is pro-people. It has kept faith with the unions. And the PAP treasures its relationship with NTUC because the NTUC is pro-worker. It remains committed to the self-respect of every working man and woman and believes that the purpose of economic development is to improve the lives of all in the workforce. We strive for growth in order to improve the lives of every Singaporean. The labour movement can be assured that the PAP will never abandon the working men and women. The 4G leadership grew up witnessing how this close working relationship between the PAP and the unions has benefited Singaporeans. All of us in the 4G team have been personally involved in the labour movement in one way or another. Brothers Chun Singh, Chi Ming, Yi Kang, Iswaran, Chi Hao, Po Kun, and Sister Josephine have served or are serving with the labour movement. And this close relationship between the PAP and the unions goes back decades. We have had Labour MPs in Parliament since the beginning, from Mahmoud Awang and Eric Cheong in the 1960s to stalwarts like Mrs. Yifu Yishun, Othman Harun Yusof, and the esteemed Madam Halima Yaakob in recent years. I would also like to pay tribute to the union leaders who have worked shoulder to shoulder with us, such as the late Sarah Tan and Nithya Nandan as well as Yo Chun Ping, who recently retired. All highly respected unionists who worked hard to improve the lives of workers. 
The contributions of this and other unionists to nation building are immense. My colleagues and I recognize the importance of what we are inheriting. This shared sense of responsibility that the PAP and the NTUC owe to Singaporeans and Singapore. This is the enduring legacy of those who came before us, the pioneers who gathered 50 years ago at a historic modernization seminar. My generation of leaders is ready to take up the baton and carry forth the mission to create a brighter future for all Singaporeans. We are confident of achieving our mission. Building on our partnerships with all Singaporeans, we will take NTUC, our workers and Singapore to the next level. Just like what our predecessors did in 1969. There is still so much we can achieve together. Brothers and sisters, we are not done building Singapore. Thank you and happy May Day. Thank you, Brother Hay, for the inspiring speech. May we invite you to take a seat, please?